Welcome back to Introduction to Programming. My name is Alex Louie, and today I'm going to go over steps in programming development. What does that mean? It means that we want to learn how to first understand the problem presented to us. Second, we want to kind of design it in our heads or use an algorithm to design a solution. And then we want to go over the concepts of coding, creating source files, and I'll show you a little bit of a program that we can simulate to display the concepts of errors. And so you're from a little bit familiar with uh, different types of errors in, in programming. So the first thing is steps in program development. What does that mean? It means that you need to understand the problem, read the problem specification thoroughly, uh, and make sure that you only do what's expected. I mean, a lot of people take um, a specification of a problem and they try and twist it around the words and say, oh, well, what if I do this? Only do what's expected. So anytime anybody presents a problem to you, make sure that you understand what they're trying to solve. Uh, nothing more and nothing less. Uh, you should aim at providing the concentrated solution for that specific problem. Don't try and create new problems out of that uh, single problem. And I find a lot of students do that. They try and create their own problems outside of the initial problem, which is not something good to do because then you get lost in the weeds. Second thing is, second step, is to design the problem using an algorithm. And what is an algorithm? And you've heard this on TV probably. Or you've heard your friends talk about algorithm, algorithms. The definition is it's just the steps, series of steps that solve a problem in a finite amount of time. So you're basically a chef. Think about it in terms of cooking. Those of you that are cookers, that, that are chefs, uh, you take uh, a recipe and you say put a little dab of this, a little dab of eggs here. Uh, powder and then you have a nice good dish but again uh, aside from cooking I mean aside from actually putting the recipes into action uh, at your first try you may not have the best dish ever so uh, I'll, I'll give you a little bit of a story I am my wife uh, taught me how to cook rice and she told me you know step one put the water in Step two, you should only have one cup of rice, two cups of water, put it in the bowl and put it in the rice cooker and then let it let it cook. Uh, and even as something as simple as that, I was not able to do on my first try. And it was pretty embarrassing, but that's how you do practice, right? You practice executing your algorithm. And now I'm a master in creating rice. Same thing with uh, broccoli. I, bring, I make broccoli for my daughter and... The first time I put garlic and a little bit of salt and uh, she did eat it but then when I tasted it it wasn't as good as I thought it, sh it should be but after a few practice runs then I was able to execute it accordingly. Now I believe we could all learn anything that we apply ourselves to so if you're trying to design an algorithm and at the first try you don't get it uh, that's okay. You can try again and keep refining your algorithm until you're satisfied. The best types of algorithms are the ones that have the minimal amount of steps because that means that your your thinking is efficient. And that's not going to come without practice. You have to practice creating uh, algorithms. So how can you represent an algorithm? Well, the couple ways which we'll go over in this course is one way is using pseudocode, uh, which is basically what I was talking about earlier in the course introduction, which is just creating English-like statements that you can use uh, to write a sequence of steps. Uh, it's it's similar to creating a recipe. So put a dab of this, put a dab of that, add two teaspoons of that. Simple as that. And we can apply it into algorithm development. And then the other way that you can write an algorithm or represent an algorithm is through a flowchart. So you have a diagram and with arrows pointing to the next step. Uh, and you'll have a logical flow of your algorithm, which it eventually could be turned into a program. So I, th I think this is very important because if you write one algorithm, then you can translate it into any programming language that you want. 
uh, and then having having done that, then you pretty much can program in any language you want, as long as you know the syntax of the language. Then other ways that you can create a represent an algorithm is iteration graph, uh, structured English, uh, and then tables with formulas. And we I'm not going to go too much into what these are because we won't use them in this course. Pretty much I will concentrate on flowcharts and pseudocode. So the next thing is after you write your algorithm and you've written your stuff on paper, then you got to get to the coding part. You translate this algorithm into whatever language you want, and the language of the choice that we're going to use is C++. And what you write in C++ is called source code. So we go from pen and pencil, pen and paper, writing our source code, writing an algorithm in pen and paper, or it could be something as notepad, and take that and translate it into a programming language such as C++. And the language itself, the programming language itself, is going to have a bunch of syntax rules that you must follow. If you don't follow these syntax rules, then you're going to have uh, errors and your program won't run. So you, you create your source code in a te any text editor that you can find. Uh, in this particular course, we're going to be using uh, De DevShed source text editor. Uh, and then we can save it to secondary storage, meaning you save it to your hard drive. And once you do that, then you write your program, then you can compile it, uh, and then obviously execute your program. So uh, when you compile a program, what happens is you turn the code, your text source code, into something called object code. And object code is actually the machine language of your PC. So before before it can do that, it has to check if the source code that you've written in C++ obeys all the syntax rules of the language. Once it says, okay, everything is up to order, meaning everything compiles correctly, you have no syntax errors, then it will create uh, an object code, object code representation of your source code, which is and you're pretty much creating a um, machine language representation of your program. So a couple of, uh, one example of a syntax error, meaning a violation of, of a rule, is creating a statement such as this. So a couple of things wrong with this is, one, there is no semicolon. So in C++, every statement must have a semicolon at the end. If it doesn't, then that gives you a syntax error. So let me show you a little bit of what I mean by that. So if I go over here, and now we're in the dev shed C++. Now, you don't have to follow along with this. I'm just sending you an example. In the upcoming lectures, I'll show you how to create a project from scratch. So don't worry about it. I just want you to understand the error types that we can get. So area equals length times width. Okay. So now once I try and go to execute and try and compile this because I want to create my object code it's going to tell me you can't do that because uh, number one you have to declare this name somewhere before you actually use it so in C++ there's a concept of declaration of variables so this is a variable and this is a variable and this is a variable for you to use these variables, you must first declare them before your pro before you start your program. Uh, and why why is that an important concept? Is because everything is memory driven. So think about when I taught you about the computer components, right? Uh, all the instructions and data go into main memory. How does this program know what memory locations it's going to use for this operation? It doesn't until you do something called the declaration. So this in itself is a syntax error. I must declare my variables first, and then I can use this expression. The other part that if I did have a declaration, so let's go ahead and declare my variable. Uh, and length and width. So you notice that I have a semicolon after each expression here. Okay, declaration statement. So if I try and compile this, 
it's going to say expected semicolon before return, meaning that it's got to have a semicolon here. So all expressions in C++ must end with a semicolon. So that's why I'm getting a syntactical error, a syntax error. That's an example of a syntax error. Now, the other types of errors you can have are something called runtime errors. Runtime errors happen during runtime. So when you compile and run your computer, your program, you may have a, 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 a situation where you're doing something that is impossible for the system to perform. One of the things that is this, the hello world example of runtime errors is division by zero. You're not allowed to divide by zero because it's going to result in a runtime error. Okay. Uh, so what's going to happen is your program is probably just going to crash. So let's do something real quick. If I do zero, right? And, and here's here's a caveat. This program will compile, so I compile it, right? Uh, but then it says uh, it stopped working. So what's going to happen is your compile your program will compile, okay? Because it follows all syntax errors, syntax rules. I'm sorry. But runtime, and during the runtime, it's going to just crash because it's trying to do something that it just cannot do, which is divide by zero. So a couple of things to realize here is that your, your program could compile correctly, but you could still have another type of error, which is a runtime error, after the fact. Okay, because just because your program compiles correctly doesn't mean that it's going to run correctly. So one thing to always re to always know is that you have to check if you do have any type of runtime errors uh, during compilation, uh, after compilation. And then the other part is, is, is a logical error. So let's say that you did compile it correctly and you're not doing any divisions by zero, right? Uh, a lot of the times what will happen is, so let me do area equals length plus width okay you'll write a program that's about 200 lines long and you're trying to compute an area you know that the area formula is area equals length times width but you mistakenly write area equals length plus width now the program itself is not going to check because it com a computer program is stupid it just does what you tell it to do so it's going to say this to me is a valid expression, um, but I don't know what you mean by area equals length times width because you're not telling me you're putting a plus sign there. So this is an example of a, of a logical error because you yourself didn't realize that instead of adding, you're supposed to multiply. Okay, so now you're going to get uh, a result that you're not expecting. So this is the type of logical error that can happen when you're writing a program. Um, in, this can happen many, many in many areas of pro, many sizes of programs. It could be a program of 20 lines. It could be a program of 300 lines. Uh, and this is the most common type of error that you'll get as you as you oh, supersede your initial uh, levels of training. So first, you'll start with compiler errors, and you're trying to figure out how to make the program compile. And then you may have a little bit of runtime errors, but they, those die down eventually. And then you'll have logic errors. Uh, and that is very, very important to realize because when you get to looping and if else statements, those that's when it'll manifest itself. Uh, it'll rear its ugly head. And how do you handle them? You just have to do trial and error. You have to make sure that when you, you know, you you do thousands of compilations and runs, and then once you see that where wherever you see that there's an output that you're not expecting then you're going to have to uh, look at look at it line by line uh, as you go through. Now, another thing that I'm, I'm going to try and teach you here is how to use the debugger. The debugger will have you trace each line one by one so that you see what's happening as the program runs. Uh, and that that's pretty much all the steps to program development. I mean, if you follow these simple steps and uh, you're aware of these rules, then you already have a head start. You just have to get into the mindset of first understanding the problem, design the problem yourself with using an algorithm, and then 
create your code compilation and then figuring out what what errors uh, you're getting if you're getting any errors now I must be honest with you sometimes I myself don't write an algorithm from scratch so I'll just instead of writing the algorithm myself I'll just go directly into the code but earlier in my career I used to write things down and say okay I'm gonna do it this way or that way I, it, it, at least initially and then after the fact then I would just uh, go right into the C++ and write it myself but I, I like you for you to get uh, used to the fact of at least initially doing creating an algorithm because this gets you into a good habit of having your brain think in an algorithmic fashion and not go into the code immediately okay once you get comfortable with the code itself then you know you can you can kind of bypass the algorithmic uh, writing of pen and paper or even on notepad um, but until then I think uh, as the next lessons come in and especially the next section I'm gonna have you write algorithms uh, just with pen and paper we're not even gonna write any code on the C++ compiler and that's it for steps in program development hope you enjoyed it and um, I'll see you uh